Nicknamed the party prince in his youth, Prince Harry has now reportedly given up alcohol and caffeine, not because he wanted to, but because Meghan told him to. Well, meanwhile, a speech he gave last week on climate change was mocked as New Age gibberish. <laughs> He didn't have to try very hard, did he? <laughs> Do you know what? I preferred, I preferred him when he was playing naked billiards in Vegas, seriously. I think he I'm might... not being funny, but what has happened to him? <gasps> he can't have a drink, he can't even have caffeine. He's reading out his out, guff. He doesn't have to. <laughs> Blimey. There we are. There's the Harry <laughs> I love. Go on, up. son. <laughs> Go on, son. He doesn't have to give up alcohol and caffeine. He has his own mind. Oh, no, he doesn't, doesn't have he? his own mind. He's reading like a robot. Doesn't some he? of the lines in that speech, right? Mm. Can you imagine Prince Harry ever actually saying some of this? You'll fall for anything. What's the line from So Hamilton? let that be your true north. <laughs> yeah, Harry really wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> Let that be your call to action, to inspire those who stand for nothing, to stand for something and to stand with you. Be braver, be stronger, be kind to each other, be if kind. If you stand for nothing, then what do you fall for? Here's Daily Mail journalist Amanda Patel, who thinks Prince Harry's fallen under the thumb, and author Radhika Sangani, who says it's just sexism and criticism aimed at the Duchess of Sussex. Is it, though? To me, it really is. It's this whole idea of, oh, the wife's changed the husband. And it, complete, it completely takes away any agency Prince Harry has. Yeah, he's a prince. Yeah, he's there is no people. agency. She's absolutely changed him completely. I, I disagree. I feel like he's been going down this path for a while. With in the Invictus Games, he was doing something amazing. He was giving back mm -hmm. with what he's done about speaking up about mental health. Heads together. He's, heads mm -hmm. together. Well, you won't find a he's member of the royal family not banging on about mental health. Come on, they're doing it all day long, every <laughs> day. My point is, he's been doing this for a while. He's been going in this direction. And then it turns out that two days before this great speech lecturing us all about climate change, he, he got a six grand helicopter to get him from Kensington to Birmingham, right? <laughs> and, and Meghan has been leaping on George Clooney's private jet from New York. At what point do we go, sorry, why don't you start with yourselves? At the end of the day, they're royals. In like, short of giving up all of their multiple engagements... So they can be do? hypocrites? How are they going to, you know, for, for what he has to do, it is part of his job. Is it hypocrisy and to do that? Could have got I on a train, though, couldn't he? And then he'd have to cancel all of the papers. He needs to be no, no, it's time. actually quicker to get no, the I train. think, okay, mm. I mean, I think at the end of the day, this is part of his job, and what he's doing is amazing because he's inspiring people and he's talking about the things that these do you generations think that, do. You think the helicopters and, and private about. jets are the best way to fight climate change issues? Well, obviously not, but if you're Thank a royal, you. you've got different responsibilities. Right, and that's obviously not. Too. So he's doing the complete opposite to what too. he's saying, right? And also, he's not saying that all of us give up flights forever. And do you he's think they really are the most? Do you think they really are the most it. engaged generation <laughs> ever? Given that the World War II generation actually, in vast numbers, sacrificed their lives to fight for freedom and democracy in this country. They were pretty engaged, weren't they? Every generation has had its own struggles. And Why is this generation more engaged? I think this generation more whiny. cares more about things. Oh, dear. All right, Imagine. Amanda. I, do you know what? I, I, I do think there is an important point about the fact that she is coming in for a lot of criticism, and it seems like this is another way to criticise her. If you want to criticise him, I, that's one thing. I don't, look, I, I don't think it's she's coming in for undue criticism. Uh, Harry has changed an enormous amount. I mean, I, when I watched that speech, I was just laughing and no, laughing. I was too. The hypocrisy about the fact that um, that you know they travel in private jets. Megan spent more than a million quid. In, she hasn't even been married a year, just on her clothes. And she's supposed to be an eco-warrior, and yet fashion is an even bigger plastic producer and... I mean, and funny enough, she... ...than aviation she, and shipping put right, together. the other day, she... So it's like, wh where are you coming from? Well, on International Women's you? Day, I, I would and... say this about Megan, right? She's obviously a smart person. I, I don't know, but she's smart, right? Um, on International Women's Day, she took part in that panel about feminism. I actually thought she said some good stuff in there. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got no issue, actually, with a lot of the things that she says. It's fine. My issue is simply that Prince Harry, right, is now regurgitating stuff that you just know he's got nothing to do with. I mean, mm. at one stage, he said, as my wife often reminds me, with one of her favourite quotes by Martin oh, Luther King Jr., darkness this... cannot drive out darkness, only and, light but... can do that, hate cannot drive but out hate, yes, only love can do that. Again, I mean, this is it's... not Prince but Harry look, talking. Again, again, you've got, you know, what a lot of people think that. They think, well, if you're so big on, on love and light love, why don't you spread some in your own family and your own dad? Okay. Right. You know, yeah. There's these double standards all the time. But I just get really sick of, you know, this thing that she said that Harry is going through gender, gender stereotype shifting. Yeah. He's becoming a feminist. The two most <laughs> beloved royals, I would say, were the Queen Mother mm -hmm. and the Queen, neither of whom really ever say anything. 
about anything. Never complain right? and never explain. Never complain, never explain, and rarely be heard speaking in public is mm. the mantra of the royals for, for 100 years. It's made them beloved. It's made them figures of what we feel are of empathy, of security, of safety, something calming about the royals and the way they conduct themselves. Then you have Princess Diana, who, who was a bit rogue and did a lot a of rogue. other stuff, you know, <laughs> and it got her into trouble and, and it got her into good stuff as well and made her, made her more of a celebrity. My issue with what's going on with uh, Meghan and Harry is they're sort of behaving like Kardashians at the moment. And it's fine, ouch, but mate. underneath it... Ouch, well, well, ouch. Yeah, and I don't mean necessarily as a compliment. I mean, it's like they... <laughs> no, they are, it wouldn't be a compliment. I don't think royals should be rocking up at stadiums, <laughs> you know, making these kind of flowery, unsubstantial speeches about we're going to save the planet, save the world, save the... And then getting cheered by thousands what as if they're doing rock stars. What it's very much part of his job. He's inspiring. And as you said, Diana... Who's led the he inspiring? Way of... And this entire engaged the generation. generation. Yeah. And as you know, as you said with Diana, she started this. She started speaking out, and I think that's the way things are going. And I think it's you know ultimately Harry. He's always done what he wants. With Vegas, he was doing what he wants. Who are we to suggest Hang on, that you now? Say but he's always done what he wants. The trouble is, this doesn't look necessarily. There's like Harry as we love him. Yeah. He wants. Yeah, There's still. the old Harry. I bet, I bet <laughs> he absolutely <laughs> cannot wait to one day do that again. But my point he's is, he's just desperate, isn't he? He probably feels us on the inside, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm part of this generation. It's impossible to scroll through Tinder without seeing that. But I look at William and Kate. Yeah, but I look at William and Kate, Amanda. So, I look at William and Kate, and they just conduct themselves, I guess, in a slightly more traditional way. Yeah. They're the future king and queen of the country. But I, I, I admire the way they go about their business, actually. I think they go about well, it in a very, you know, conventional royal way. And actually, that's what we want from the royals. I don't think we want to be lectured by the royals constantly I, I, I about this political is, issues. It, it, I think it's a huge mistake for Harry. It, it's wonderful that he's in love, that he's met this mm. woman, that they're kind of changing, going on a journey together. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> a millennial <laughs> yeah, going on a Even journey Even the word together. journey know, is very making. Can you believe you but, said but, that? But, but remember <laughs> Diana famously said that she never worried about William because he was sensible and he was bright. She worried about Harry because he wasn't that bright. And I think that he's very easily influenced. And, and uh, you know, I just think... Uh, I think it's quite insulting, a lot of the stuff he's saying. You know, we're the ones who care. We're the ones... Who take the hypocrisy aside. I thought the whole thing about this... It's, this is the most engaged generation. Only this, lot, only this lot care about saving the world. It's, actually, it's fine. How are you actually going to save the world? Here, Harry, you don't save the world when it comes to climate change and conservation and stuff by jumping on helicopters every two minutes. You don't save it by letting your wife jump on private jets owned by George Clooney. Mm. That's not how you save the planet. Say, That's actually how you damage the planet. But you you can't do both. By spreading awareness and by talking about these things, which is what he's doing. Maybe, maybe, and it may be. Here's the thing I may have to consider. It may be I'm simply too old. It may be that young people... <laughs> never. It may be that <laughs> never, at 53, never. nearly 54, <laughs> yeah. I am simply simply not woke enough, <laughs> and that young people in this country, they want to have Prince Harry standing there spewing this guff. It he, might be he that. He did say, as part of his speech, you may find yourselves frustrated with the older generation. <laughs> it seems like they don't care. <laughs> Try to remember, said Prince Harry, that not know. everyone sees the world the way that you do. I don't know. That doesn't mean that they don't care. I just know I grew up around... <laughs> for example, I grew up around very strong women. My mother... My grandmother, two of the strongest women you'd ever meet, right? They just... This kind of guff. They're like, what is this? Like, it's the new way. They is. didn't need International Women's Day to it's... remind themselves to be but... strong. They've always been strong. And the thing is, they lived their lives. They, were, they acted, they behaved like feminists. Yeah. They brought up strong boys. Mm. It's a bit like a Christian who bangs on the whole... Who, who says, I'm a Christian, that's why I do these things. Actually, you judge a person by their actions and, mm. and you judge a woman and a man by the way they treat women. I think, you know, look, I think if Prince Harry said, right, I am going to make an absolute stand about climate change. I'm not going to get helicopters anymore. I'm going to get, you know, the brilliant. train. I'm going to do this. Mm. In other words... Megan's going to wear the same dress twice. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. we're going to do that. She's we're going to conserve gonna one there. dress for a period of 24 <laughs> hours. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, look... Thank you both very much. <laughs> uh, it may be I'm wrong. I rarely am, but you have to sometimes <laughs> consider the impossible. <laughs>